everybody and welcome to Virtual Scholars Week. With me today I have Katie and Emily from the Admin and Finance team and they're going to talk to us about project management. But before we get started, I would love it if you would give us a little bit about your background and how long you've worked in the industry. And Emily, why don't we start with you? Hi, I'm Emily and my primary, uh, my primary background is in medical practice management. I worked for the Department of Defense, Army Medicine for several years. And during that time, I received my master's degree in project management. I have been at Johns Hopkins Hospital with the project management team for almost two years now. Thanks, Thank you. Um, and I'm Katie. Katie. Hi, hi, Heather. At the beach. Um, at the beach. Um, I also work in our project management office. I'm actually the project management office manager. Uh, I've been at Hopkins for 10 years, and prior to my career here, I was in, I worked for a small software development company where I learned project management um, for healthcare in that industry as well. Great. Well, I know a lot of people wonder about what project management is, so I think to start us off, tell us what is a project? Okay, so a project is really just, it's unique. I think that's the clarifying question where people get hung up, so it's not something that's routine um, and it always has a start and end date um, with a defined scope and resources to work on that project. So that's definition of a project. Great. And so I think people can wrap their head around what a project is. So what is that? What's different about that than what we do just like every day? So like Katie mentioned, a project has a defined start and end date and there are resources that are specified specifically for that project. But you might find that some of your routine work incorporates some project task or the work you do is the result of a project that has been completed. Okay. How, um, how then is a project different than project management? Good question. So project management is actually the, the skills and the knowledge that sits behind the project. So it's actually, um, you want to read up on it there's lots of books about project management our favorite one is called the pen box so in your spare time if you want to read through that um, but really there's just a methodology behind it that Emily will walk us through in a little bit but it has different phases that actually takes you through how to get a complete project accomplished on time and on budget so it's sort of like I, I can I can want to do a project but if I don't manage it well then there's a good chance it's not going to kind of flow well. Right. Okay. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about that project process. So the project process has five basic phases. You have initiation, planning, execution, monitor, monitoring and controlling, and closure. So initiation is the initial spark or idea or challenge that it presents itself. Then after that, we decide that we're going to take this project on. This is something that we're going to do. And now we need to identify what are the goals of the project. So what would we actually like to accomplish when we finish this project? And we'll define the deliverables. We'll know this project is finished when we see this result. We have a guiding document called a project charter that helps lead the work that we do. And then we start establishing the roles and responsibilities of the team and start the initial identification of who is going to help us out with this work. So some maybe additional resources outside that defined team. And now we're planning. So we have these theories, we have our goal, we have our deliverables, but how do we get there? So we come up with a plan and that is, and the simplest form is a list of tasks or a list of steps that we believe we need to complete to meet these end goals. And we're gonna start figuring out how much this is gonna cost and then how do we communicate that to our stakeholders, to our shareholders, to our project sponsor, and then everybody else who is on our team to help us move this project along. Now we're in the execution phase. So we're gonna put our theory into practice. So we're gonna try out those steps and tasks that we believe is going to get us to our end goal. And if they work, we're gonna use those to define our processes and procedures along the way. And depending on the type of project you do, your task may vary. Uh, then we go into monitoring and controlling. So we need to verify that those steps that we're taking towards our goals are working. So we'll refer back to the goals and deliverables that we define in the initiation stage and compare them to where we are right now. If those, are, if those goals are being accomplished or we're moving as we should appropriately to those goals, then we keep the project, we keep the project moving. If not, 
we need to go back to the planning phase and reevaluate those steps and tasks that we need to do to complete the project. Once we have gotten to the point where we believe that all of our goals and our deliverables have been met, we need to meet with our project sponsor to have them agree and validate those goals and deliverables. So essentially they're saying what we set out in the beginning to do, we have done. Then we create a project summary, we review that with our leadership, and then after that's reviewed, we will archive our project summary because as project managers, we like to review previous work to help us in our further work. Okay, that sounds interesting. So this is a, there's, there's a lot to unpack here. Is there anything that you guys use that sort of helps you move through these phases? Yeah, so in our project management office, which I don't know how many people in the Department of Nursing actually know we have, um, but we do have a project management office with a couple, couple we're trying to grow it, project managers on our team, and we've developed um, a governance toolkit that actually has a lot of tools that Emily just talked through in each one of those phases that we use. So one of the ones that's in that toolkit, that's the, the project charter, we actually, you'll hear, hear us refer to it as called an A3 which is actually just the paper size that it sits on. Um, but that, that's, prime, that's like the living, breathing project document. Um, it, it has all your deliverables. It has what are my outcomes for success. So that's probably the, the biggest one. We've also developed a status template that we can mail out to, email out to our, our project team just to, you know, on whatever defined interval we have to say, here's where we are. Um, you heard Emily reference a closure template. So we've also developed a template for that just it's, um, so these are all things that people can go in and, and use as they're working on projects. There's also a ton of EVP tools that are also in our governance toolkit that we created and quality improvement tools. And that governance toolkit lives on our internet site um, so everybody can access it. Great. Um, how would, if somebody was interested in doing a project, how would they go about um, how would they go about submitting their ideas or how would they go about starting a project? We've tried to make it pretty straightforward and simple as possible. If you, if you are a member of the Department of Nursing, you can visit the nursing internet site and along the margins, we have a link that you can click that will allow you to complete a form to submit your project idea. We just need basic information, uh, which would include a brief description of what the challenge or idea is. Okay. And then yeah. so once that happens, then what? Right. So once that, um, that idea is submitted, the, there's a coordinating council for the hospital called the Professional Practice Coordinating Council. And their role is really to review all those intakes um, and determine which ones we can fit in this fiscal year or maybe next fiscal year and determine if there's overlap across the department. So they really kind of review those every two weeks and determine if they're is something that's deemed a project. Um, and then from there, once it's actually determined it's a project, um, our office will actually assign a project manager to help um, work through those projects. Um, and we have a bunch of different tools and project tracking that we use um, to, to actually formalize those projects. Our biggest tool is a system called Smartsheet, and Emily will talk through that in a little bit. Um, but we really use that to keep us on track and, and share every share with the whole department where we actually are with all of our projects. Oh, okay, great. So Emily, do you want to show us or talk to us about what that smart sheet looks like? Sure. So this is a screenshot of the portfolio dashboard. The portfolio dashboard is designed to show all the projects that are being managed by the PMO office, which Katie and I are a part of. Our dashboard shows projects that have been submitted, that are in progress, and that have closed, along with the specialty areas that have submitted those projects and what strategic uh, goals that they fall under for the year. For once a project is initiated or has been started, we have a modified dashboard that shows the high level uh, facts of, the, of that specific project. So here we can find out who started the project, when it, uh, when it started, who's on the team, and what are those high level tasks that they're working on? So can you guys walk me through like a real, like a real world example of a project that you, that, you're, that you have worked on or that you're currently working on that would maybe help um, our staff get a greater understanding of how this applies to their, like their daily work? 
Sure. Let's go back to our project phases. So one project the staff may be very familiar with is the supplemental staffing units. So the supplement, supplemental staffing unit came about because there was this idea that a centralized pool of nurses that could be managed central or could be managed through the hospital would benefit our care on the floor. So a project idea was submitted, it was approved, and we started working on the goals and deliverables. We were moving through the planning phase, we had the idea of how this could work, we had communities that we built for education, for, for training, for orientation, and onboarding, and finance. And as we were moving through these goals this spring, then we had COVID. <laughs> so all those, those tasks and, and well thought out plans that we had kind of had to be put uh, into hyperspeed. And so now we're in the execution phase where we're trying to roll this out to meet this new demand that COVID has presented to us. And then what we had figured out along the way is some of those tasks that we thought we need to do or some of that plan that we thought we need to do actually need to be modified. So that's the monitoring and controlling part of the project. You know, for example, the upscaling of nursing skills, what nurses can float to what area, uh, is one of those things that we were working through and we learned as we stood up the SSU. The project isn't complete yet, and this is an example of a long-term project. It's definitely gonna take some thought and work into. And so for a while, for the SSU project, we may be cycling through the planning, execution, and monitoring and controlling phase until we get to that project closer phase. Well, great. I think that nurses can all appreciate how much project work or project management goes into something like a supplemental staffing unit where there's a lot of moving parts and and also some trial and error and that's that great part of being able to sort of evaluate what you're doing and then going backwards and saying oh well this worked or this didn't work and how do we need to do things differently when you have this management in place then it gives you like a trail of what to follow or process to follow so that's that's excellent um, do you guys have anything else to add? Um, unfortunately, because we're virtual and we don't have a lot of like Q&A session that we can have, is there anything else that you feel like uh, the staff would need to know uh, about project management or the work that you do or how to get in touch with you? Um, Emily, if you just flip forward to that project portfolio slide, I think my big takeaway from this is just to let everyone know that there is a portfolio dashboard that lives on the nursing internet where people can view what projects are happening. And again, it's a breakdown by every specialty area and all the projects that are being managed centrally. So just to let everyone know this is out there and that we are continuing to work through um, education to have other people manage projects outside of our project management office, because I know that's been a request before. Those are, I think, two things that I would like it for everyone to know. I think this is great because I think it's really important for the nurses to know that they can go someplace and look and see what's happening right now so that they don't think that things aren't happening. You know, a lot of people have similar ideas across specialty areas. And so maybe it's being worked on in one place and maybe you don't know about it, but you could go here and find out. Then you can get involved in that and, and apply some of those same principles where you work. So that's outstanding. Thank you. All right, ladies, I really appreciate uh, your time today. And if anybody has questions or concerns, we are going to post the PowerPoints for everybody to view at a later time. And also you can always reach us at the Center for Nursing Inquiry if you have any additional questions. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a great day, everybody.